Happy New Year, everyone. So today I'm going to do a video in the spirit of New Year's resolutions. I want to do IT New Year's resolutions because there's always things in IT that uh, people forget to do, right? You might not always be on point about your updates, might not always look at those security settings, you might let sit by, or maybe you're just not monitoring your servers. So today I thought I'd remind you guys to monitor your servers, and if you're using Nagios Core, I'm going to go over how to add a new skin to Nagios Core to give it like a little update for the new year. So Nagios Exchange website has tons and tons of stuff on there. And one of the things they have is actually a number of free skins that you could actually put on Nagios Core. And the skin is meaning updated HTML and updated uh, cascading style sheets to give it a new appearance. So the Nagios Core appearance has been looking the same forever. It's a free product, tons of great features, um, but you might want to change the way it appears to customize it to your company. So today I'm going to show you how to update the skin, where the CSS is located in Nagios Core, and how to add your own and custom company logo into your Nagios Core web interface. So just keep watching and I'll show you guys how quick and really, really quick this is to do and how to get started updating your um, Nagios install. So if we take a look at the current interface for Nagios Core, it's been this way for a fairly long time, as long as I can remember really. And there's nothing wrong with this interface, it works perfectly fine, and it is a free product, so you know you can't really say much. If you get the Nagios XI, there's tons of more functionality and the interface is different. So if you want something a little more updated and your company can afford it, then the functionality in the Nagios XI is a great product, I would recommend giving that a try definitely if you can afford it within your company budget. But if you want something free, Nagios Core is definitely the way to go for server monitoring. But as you can see, some people might not appreciate the web interface, um, especially if you have to show it to upper management or people who are just not on the technical staff. They might not uh, appreciate just the technical features of this software and they, they want more of the, you know, kind of the bells and whistles, the modern website um, might be spruced up to appear like. So something that you can do is actually install a skin over this. So the skin can make different changes because essentially the skin is going to change some of the HTML and the CSS cascading style sheets of the website or the web page that this information is coming from. So uh, Nagios XI does when you install it and Nagios Core, they both set up a um, web directory on your Apache web server. So this does use Apache, uses normal, you know, HTML, normal CSS, normal Apache uh, web directory configuration. So if you're familiar with web development, then you can actually go in here and modify this yourself. But Nagios Exchange has actually tons of different skins that we could actually update the web interface the web, how it appears, but still retain all the functionality. So everything you're showing here with the host, the host grid, the summary, that will all still be there, but the general appearance will change slightly. And this is great, again, to show people in your management or if you need to include reports to management, you can actually get printouts from here and make it look more professional. So if you haven't been to um, exchange.nagios.org, it's part. Of, it's an open source central location where tons of Nagios products, plugins, any Nagios related product can be posted here, and there are hundreds of them. So if you need anything customized, it probably exists. If you come here and take a look. So as far as plugins, notifications, different front ends, different event handlers, different dashlets. So tons of functionality already pre-programmed in here. So you come in here and look for what you need and it's really great. So I'm gonna look at the front ends and the front ends, they actually have different front ends for like Linux, OS X web, um, and actually mobile devices, which I thought was pretty cool too. So maybe I'll make a video on that later. But I'm looking at web interfaces. So this is something that how it appears. So I know a lot of data centers might have something, their monitoring tool, always on, always on, on like maybe a large screen. So it might be nice to look at, um, have it appear more updated. So the, the ones in yellow here are some of the more popular ones. So I'm, this is the one I'm gonna be setting up today. 
Vator, I think it's pronounced, but it's French. Might be getting that completely wrong. So we take a look at the gallery, you get an idea what it looks like here. So again, it's using a little bit more modern style looking buttons. And at the end, I'm going to show you how to update the logo so you can go ahead and customize it to your company's needs. So you just kind of take a look and this is completely free. There are a few other skins there that if you want a different skin, they're all kind of the same idea of how as you're playing the basic style sheets, the skating shell sheets. So something you can go take a look at the company that developed the site or it's actually the individual in this case individual developer that created the skin. Um, but actually as far as installing this, it's very, very easy. So you go ahead and click on that URL and we're gonna go ahead and download it. Um, very small download. Again, it's pretty much just a few style sheets that we're downloading here. So once it's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal and take a look at that download file. It's a zip file, so I just save it to my downloads directory. You can save it anywhere you want. And it's a zip file. So we'll use the unzip command. Right there, bubble underscore style dot zip. And we're going to point it to one of the directories in Nagios so it overwrites that directory. So you go to your local Nagios. That's where my Nagios install is. If yours is in a different location, um, be sure to actually take note of that. So before I do anything, any changes, always, always do a backup. Um, something as simple as copying a file or copying the directory. In this case, I'm going to tar it up and then I'm just going to save the tar. That's in case anything changes that I don't care for, that I want to make sure that I can go back to my original configuration. I'm going to go ahead and do this tar. So there's my tar file. You can go ahead and save this somewhere else. A lot of it's very common to start using GitHub to actually do these sort of backups. So that's actually great, if that's actually a good practice. If you're uh, very familiar with GitHub, go ahead and uh, submit changes there. So then you have version control, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and if you list the directories of Nagios, one of them is local Nagios, uh, user local Nagios share. And in that share directory is pretty much all the web content. So this is your web folder here. And then when your web folder there's going to be um, your HTML and your style sheets and any images that are presented. So we go back to our download directory. I'm going to go ahead and unzip it. Unzip minus D and then the zip file name. And this should overwrite. So it will prompt you that it will be overwriting files. So be sure again that you have your backup before running this command. Very important. Um, to have that backup so you can always revert back. Um, once that's done, it's going to prompt you here and we're going to go ahead and overwrite those files. If you're actually running your Nagios server on a VM, this is actually a good place you can take a snapshot of your VM. So that would be like another easy way you could do a system um, restore very easily by uh, deleting the snapshot. So if you're running any sort of like VMware product, this would be actually a good point to do that snapshot. So once the style sheets have all been copied and replaced in our Nagios share folder, you kind of see the path there in case you want to go modify any of them. I want to restart the Nagios server. This step is actually probably not required, but I did it anyways. And once you do that, you just go ahead and open up your website and let's go ahead and take a look at what our new interface looks like. Um, it most likely you will have to delete your cache to get the complete changes, your browser cache. So, uh, you know, some of it has not changed yet. It looks kind of similar to the way it was before. Give it a few minutes, go in and delete your uh, browser history and browser cache and you will see your changes. So now you go ahead and see it kind of looks a lot nicer now. It has kind of like some little slight more updated, more current styles being used that you'll find on websites. Something easy that you can do is actually to customize it just a slightly bit more is modify the logo. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my custom logo. So if you saw I right click there and I went to inspect. This is to inspect the HTML code. This is uh, a utility built into the browser here. And this is just, um, I believe I'm just using Chrome here. So it's nothing special with the browser. Lots of browsers have this inspect feature. And if you just hover your mouse over 
the part of the web page, it'll tell you what line of HTML code that is um, being used to call that, that image or that um, button or whatever. So in this case, I want to look at there. So I just went to Word and I created this little, nothing too special here, uh, just my uh, YouTube channel handle, just to create like a little logo. So I just, you know, copy it. You can just take any image. You might want to resize it. I want to save it as, if you notice that inspect, the file that's being called is logo.gif. So make sure it is the right file type, logo.gif. And I look at that path, so be sure to note the path is image slash interface slash logo.gif. And that's going to be on the web server. So I'm going to copy it to that location. So again, yeah. So I'm going to open up my web server console. So I got my logo.diff file there. I saved it to my home directory. Now I'm just going to copy it over to my Nagios folder. So again, user local Nagios, and then it's share. And if you remember that inspect, it was image images slash interface. So images and then interface. So again, I always keep it original, so just a good habit. So I just did a copy. So I copy this, sorry, move, I'm sorry, move this to another file name. I just add the word original in there. And again, once you copy over your logo, so I'm copying it over from my home directory to my dot, my present working directory. And now if I go back to my browser, again, you, you might take a few minutes before you see it unless you delete your cache. So if you go over back to your browser and reload the page a few times, you should start seeing a few more of the changes. You can kind of see it's still there. So it did take a few minutes for me to get that to appear correct. As you can see, yeah, it just wasn't uh, updating the page completely for me. So if you see, yeah, I kept reloading it. But you can kind of see some of the other buttons are slowly getting updated. Some of the CSS is getting replaced in our browser cache. At the end, I actually did go in um, and deleted my cache just to speed up this process because it was just taking too long for me. But you kind of see how um, it nicely laid out our host information as well. So I changed a little bit of that. So if you go into your Chrome and go down to uh, clear browser content. I just go ahead and cleared my cache images and files. So you really don't need to delete everything here. So I cleared that, went back here, and there you go. So that's just a fast way to get your cache cleared. And actually, <laughs> oddly enough, clearing cache clearly, um, actually fixes a lot of problems on some websites. So um, yeah, so you can just kind of take a look around and enjoy your new skin. So I kind of really liked this skin. I thought it was actually it looked really nice. And it was a nice, fast, easy way to update your free this free product. So it's a great way to just spruce it up a tiny bit. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the video. And give me a thumbs up if you like it. And any comments about any information you had questions about or just want to know, um, leave them below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching guys. I hope that you have a wonderful new year and that you stick to your IT New Year's resolutions, that you update your software, you update your OS, and you monitor your hardware. Other than that, have a wonderful new year guys and make sure you try to update the skin on your Nagios Core install. I think it'll give it a nice little fresh update. Other than that, I will see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates guys. Bye!